Hello everyone, I'm back. Let me show you what I've been working on. Previously, I had templates all the way up to the front of this part, and I was going to use my fiberglass skin uh, to fill in all of that blank area right there. And then I realized I could use sheet metal. The advantage of sheet metal, especially the galvanized sheet metal that I use, is that fiberglass doesn't stick to it. So it makes a great mold surface if you can get the shape you want. It means it can't be a real complicated shape with compound curves, which this isn't. It's basically straight sections. So what I did was I took the uh, templates off of the front section from where you can see the A all the way up to the very front and use those templates on a piece of sheet metal. I happen to have sheet metal cutters and vendors, so I use those in some cases, but you can do it with just pieces of wood or a table or whatever. So this is what I ended up with. There's my templates underneath, and then here's the piece of sheet metal, and I bent it. Uh, I wanted a straight edge uh, across here, so I went to the side of the car that I made this templates from and saw where the straight lines are. Those are in red. So I took those, I put the piece of sheet metal up there, tr traced the top edge, uh, cut it with just a pair of uh, sheet metal shears. I got both right and left-handed sheet metal shears, uh, snips, tin snips. Um, so I cut that top curved edge, uh, left a little bit so I could bend it over and then uh, went ahead and went as far as the width of the uh, sheet metal. Traced both that top edge and that front edge for the curve. So there's the top edge. I bent it uh, 90 degrees uh, or close to 90 degrees to get that uh, curve to stay. Then I bent it uh, out at that first red line and then bent it back in at the second red line to get the general shape that I needed. That's a little bit sharper, those corners, than uh, what's on the car, but that can easily be the outside one could be sanded down to round it off. And then the inside one could be slightly filled in uh, to make up for that. You need to be careful when you uh, use the sheet metal because if you crease it or bend it or dent it, that dent stays. So you can see right there, there's a dent right there that I put in there while I was making this. And it's just not worth the effort to uh, take it out. Um, let me see. Some of this will pop out, some of it won't. Um, I, Ideally, I would have actually put templates in between each of those, but this will work. I just have to be careful not to uh, flex it because it will pop back uh, to the opposite curve easily. But when I put the material in there, I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, there's a straight edge from across the bottom. So I used literally a straight edge there to keep that uh, this tape isn't sticking for some reason. I'll have to switch the tape that I use. Um, I th would have thought that would have stuck to the wood, but it didn't. Uh, let's see. So, today I am going to put gel coat on the on this surface. Um, you could wax it if you wanted to, but my experience has been that uh, nothing sticks to this um, sheet metal. And in fact, I tried to use hot glue. It stuck initially, but then after about 30 minutes, it started letting loose as I handled it. Um, it might have been the 100 degree heat. I don't know, but regardless, it didn't work. Uh, so instead, what I did was I used the uh, duct tape, uh, the uh, waterproof stuff because it is very, very sticky and taped that along the edge for this foam piece here. Same way for the foam piece in the front. I did that. The reason I did that is because these pieces I didn't make with flanges. These others have a flange where I could screw 
it to. And so that's what I did was I screwed it, tightened the screw until it pulled uh, the sheet metal to the surface. And that gives me my shape. Now this only works because this is relatively flat and straight. Uh, linearly, if it weren't, it wouldn't work as well. I do have a uh, English wheel, but I found out it's a lot more difficult to use than I thought. And in this case, I just need it close enough to the right shape. Uh, so this will work without going through all the trouble of using an English wheel. So like I said, I'm going to coat this with gel coat. And then I am going to put fiberglass mat on top of that. And I am going to make this probably two layers of fiberglass mat, uh, which should make it 90 thousandths of an inch thick. And then when I add the gel coat to that, it's going to be that 100 thousandths uh, inch thick that the uh, other panels are. So just so you'll see, these are the old panels I made and they are roughly 100 thousandths of an inch thick because that's how I made those. It is gel coat and then two layers of fiberglass mat along with the appropriate resin. Uh, down in the description, I show you um, the link to the calculators that I use to determine how much gel coat, how much fiberglass resin, and how much uh, fiberglass mat to use. And it has a drop down so that you can pick whatever material you're using for the uh, fiberglass, or it even has carbon fiber. Uh, you have to get good at <laughs> converting between cups and pounds and uh, teaspoons and ounces and all of that stuff. Um, I have, uh, I gave a little cheat sheet down at the bottom of what I use, what works for me. And that should do it for today. So I've got to get going. I've got to get, uh, make some progress on this. So like, subscribe, hit the alert. Um, hit the thanks if you want to donate. And if you don't know what I'm doing, you don't know Jack. Bye.